Okay, so this is a um, little introductory video to the sea salts um, uh, lecture that we'll be having, um, really uh, to just get you clued in and start thinking about some of the, the issues that are involved uh, when considering the dissolved ions in the ocean. So hopefully most of you will remember um, a slide that looks a little bit like this, which is kind of the reason why the ocean is salty. So I'll just give myself a little bit of a pointer. So uh, stuff, ions are weathered from rocks, uh, they come down in river water. Okay, the river water is a relatively low concentration of those dissolved ions. That river water enters the ocean and only the water evaporates back out. So although the river water has got a low concentration of dissolved ions, the ocean has got a high concentration because the water is constantly being recycled, okay, bringing in fresh or bringing in kind of fresh water that's got some dissolved ions in it, but we're only removing fresh water that's got no dissolved ions in it. Okay, so that, that keeps the flux of ions to the ocean kind of continuous um, and allows salts to build up in the ocean. So the, the key questions that we're going to be looking at are, are where do these uh, dissolved ions actually come from? So this is the, the chemical composition of the oceans of the continental crust. Sorry, so mostly oxygen uh, and silicon. Um, that's not really surprising because most of the uh, the continental crust is made up of silicate rocks. But there's some aluminium and iron, and these are held in in minerals like feldspars and pyroxenes and things like that, which you, you may be aware of. And then there's a small component of the the, the the chemical composition of the um, earth crust that's made up of these what we would maybe consider minor elements that are there at much lower concentrations okay so the the units on on here in this in this are in parts per million so that's for instance titanium there's 4400 uh, grams of titanium in a million grams of of rock okay so that's the, what the units are looking at there so the, the key thing is that not all of those elements ultimately end up as dissolved ions in the ocean. So if we start off, so this is the, that same plot, and I've just taken out um, the oxygen, okay, because the oxygen doesn't really end up as a dissolved ion in the ocean. It actually gets um, hydrolyzed into water, but that's, that's, not, that's not for today. But anyway, so this is the composition of the continental crust here. And when we weather... Um, that so when we start to dissolve those rocks not all of those these elements kind of equally get dissolved into the river water so we can see here that um, that for instance silicon is very abundant in continental crust but actually forms a very very small component of um, river water okay whereas the elements like calcium okay they seem to be much more concentrated in uh, river water than they are in the continental crust Okay, so you might want to think about why that is. So why do some elements preferentially kind of dissolve into river water and, and others not? Okay, and you also want to think where do those other elements get left behind? So if the silicon isn't making it into the ocean, where does it end up? Okay, uh, um, so this is a bit of a hint here. Um, and then we've got to think about, you know, what happens to that river water when it enters the ocean? So again, this is the same kind of pipe diagrams again. So we've got the composition of river water and the composition of seawater. And although seawater has got much more salt dissolved in it than river water, it's also of a slightly different composition. Okay. Now I'm just going to kind of take away the carbon species here. Okay, so I've just taken away the carbon species, so all the other proportions of the ions, other ions are the same. Um, you might want to think about why it's sensible for me to take away carbon and, and not consider that. But here we can see that river water has got lots and lots of calcium in it, lots and lots of sulfur, uh, relatively little chlorine, um, hardly any sodium, potassium. Um, but then when we look at the seawater, okay, we can see that the proportions are now changed. Okay, so we've now got lots of chlorine, lots of sodium, uh, very very little silicon okay compared to the amount of silicon that we had in river water so uh, there's something going on here okay so there's something that's making these elements chlorine and sodium be preferentially more concentrated in seawater and some process that's kind of reducing the relative concentrations of elements particularly like calcium okay so uh, some questions to think about before the lecture so first of all, why do some elements get behind during weathering? So why do they not? Why does the, the composition of river water not look like the chemical composition of the ocean, of the continental crust? Uh, and ultimately, where do these kind of 
non-soluble ed- elements end up? If they don't make it into the ocean, where do they go? Okay, and then some uh, questions about comparing river water and the um, uh, seawater. So why are sodium and chlorine preferentially more concentrated in the um, ocean than elements like calcium and silicon? So the calcium and silicon are still more concentrated in seawater than they are river water, but the proportional concentration increase is not as much for calcium and silicon as it is for sodium and um, chlorine. So why is that? Um, and then I guess lastly, why was it sensible for me to ignore dissolved carbon when I was considering this? And this is kind of actually a, a thought for a future lecture on um, uh, gases and, and, and climate. Okay, so think about these questions uh, uh, before the, uh, the lecture, um, and then we will, uh, we will go through uh, and um, try and answer them, which will be fun uh, for me.